Hello, welcome to another devlog. It's been quite a while since the last one um, and progress has not been particularly fast. No, no great problems, just um, life is getting in the way a bit and um, progress has been much slower than I would have hoped. So I don't have any big things to show, big bits of progress, but, um, but I'm making progress and uh, I've got a few bits and pieces to show. Um, yeah, so um, this is the kitchen and I've been working on it a bit. It's coming together. Um, still not all here yet, but um, uh, yeah, getting the bits and pieces together. That's what I've been working on modeling recently. Uh, I don't know if you can hear, I'll stop talking for a minute. Yeah, it's really quiet, but uh, one of the big things I've been working on is foot a footstep system so that when you walk, you can hear your feet. Can you hear my feet? Maybe. Um, I've designed it to work with different kind of materials so I can set up like what the floor is made of and it'll it'll play sounds according to what the material is. At the moment I've only set up one material which is carpet and I've only done it in two rooms. Um, but I have added what I think is quite a nice feature which is that um, so the hall doesn't work, the living room does, and you can probably hear this better. So here there's occasional creak of a floorboard. And the way I've set the system up is that um, it has a, has a pool of sounds that it plays every time you take a step, or when it pretends you've taken a step. Um, it plays them randomly, never plays the same one twice in a row. But then it also can have optionally another pool of sounds with alternate details in um, with an extra layer of probability on playing those or not. Um, so the way I've got it set up right now, all of the carpeted rooms have a, like a squeaky floorboard probability where right now it's set up so that the kitchen will very occasionally squeak and the living room will squeak much more often. And then I'll use that further, like outside. Uh, you're not going to be crunching through leaves. You're going to be walking on ground, on grass or on soil. But I'll put the occasional twig snap or leaf crunch or something in there. And um, I'm pretty happy with how that system has worked out. Mm, my first time creating something like that and it's gone pretty well. Um, then I've been working a bit on water, so this tap now works. Uh, it's very basic and it's probably going to stay very basic. I was thinking about getting into working out how to get more splashes or get the water to flow down the plug hole. Um, I think I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stick with a pretty simplistic water system. But it's important to have taps which work and so got taps which work. Uh, use the, the tap rotates at the same time and this is in fact a, an extension of the system I built for like animating objects when you interact with them. So last video or the video before that I showed a sewing box which unfolds and um, that was before I'd done that I just had a very simple uh, system where when you interact with an object it can animate it, a door can rotate open or whatever. I expanded that out to put in multiple um, timed animations, rotations and translations to to work with the sewing box and that has meant that I can do other not complicated things but like doors which do that which like cantilever open I guess is the word um, and so that system now works also with particles. So this is the same thing. It can trigger particle systems if they're attached to the object. And also, um, there's one in here, also with text. So here's a thing which just opens and also writes out some text at the same time. 
Um, so that's that works well. I'm pretty happy with the system. There are a couple of little um, oh this door is currently not a collider. Oh look at that! I got stuck in the door. Let's uh, try that again. Um, yeah, I haven't like after changing all the animation system, I haven't put all the animations back on all the objects. So there are some things like that which don't really work. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, anyway, yeah, there are some slight oddities good right now, like uh, for the interaction with the tap, you can click on the, the tap to make it work. Clicking on the wall doesn't, but the, the animatable bits, you can't, which is silly. It's uh, similarly here, this door will open, but I shouldn't have done that, but the other one uh, won't. So I can't click on this side of the door. Um, that's because of the way that I've built it to have uh, all of the interaction based on one physical object. And that's silly, really. I, I, will, I will change that. Um, what else? Oh, yes. So I think last time or the time before I showed the system I made for um, having like a big uh, bucket of objects where it pulls them out randomly out of the, the bookcase. And that was the first, uh, the bookcase that I'd made was the first like uh, idea I'd had to deal with big collections of objects and picking them up, interacting with them without making everything cluttered and having to click on individual things. So I've expanded that system a bit now. So here's another example. It's a box of... Uh, blocks, wooden blocks, but when you click on it you get a different model each time. I mean there's not an infinite number of models that I've made. 12 or 13 I think. Um, so it's the same system as with the books but uh, I've made it a little bit sophisticated that now instead of just picking a random text it has text which um, it can pick from random text or it can it can uh, add texts uh, specific to each model that it's, it's showing you. In this one, for example, the title at the top of the screen is just random. But I've got three or four different options. And then the, the text at the bottom which describes it is, uh, is the same for uh, every time for, the, for each model. Um, so yeah, this also has another thing which I can't really show you, but like uh, it's possible to set up a default first object. So this one will always show the collection of the bricks not assembled into anything the first time you interact with it. Um, so that's cool, uh, I think. Mm, oh yeah, there's a couple of little bits I've made. Here's a pogo stick. Uh, fr the fridge is causing me problems at the moment. Um, Oh, incidentally, this is a thing that I've been trying to work out a bit how to deal with. So, this corridor is bad. It's really unreadable. The fact that the back wall and this wall are the same colour means that it's just... It's not nice to... Think. So, I'm going to have to maybe just add some decoration to the walls and things to, to make the corridors more readable. So, I don't think I've shown this, although it's been... I've built it a long time ago. This is the master bedroom. Um, it's more populated now. There's a freeze which I've messed the the UVs up on, so I need to go back and sort out the scaling on that. But I finally made some shoes to go with the dresses, and the shoes it turns out are kind of hard to model. Uh, it took me a little while. Uh, there is some bits and pieces here. There will be more later, and this again probably. Mm, no, I don't know. Maybe I'll have a little sort of uh, makeup bucket that you can pick random things out of and then some ob bigger objects that you can pick up individually. Um, yeah, again, little details and things. I think this room is probably different from the last time I showed it in any of these videos. Um, it was bigger before. I shrunk the whole house down um, because it's not supposed to be a big house. It's supposed to be a, a little flat. And it's already kind of realistically bigger than it would be in real life. Um, but 
I wanted it to feel uh, a bit more cramped. So I took like a meter off the width of the house or something like that. Uh, so the, the layout of this room has changed a bit because of that. Um, that's kind of most of the little bits to sh that I can show you, except that I've done a bit more here since the last time I showed you. So I was working pretty heavily on this downstairs room um, then, and I just completed the tables and stuff, and I've just rounded out this room. And this room is nearly finished in terms of detailing and decoration and color scheme. It's the most complete of any of the bits of the house. So all of the furniture is here now. This is a cupboard with toys and games in it. There's probably going to be a couple more toys up here. Um, but I've got some house plants in. A little mister. I need one more plant to fit on that. And I'll put a couple more decorative bits in. Um, I was initially planning on putting a lot more stuff in, of having quite a kind of cluttered, um, lots of cluttered services with knickknacks and things on. And I've scaled that idea back. Um, I think it will help readability to not do that, but mostly it's just um, kind of trying to reach a compromise of what, I'll have, what I can do if I ever want to finish this game. And um, it's already taking longer than I had hoped. And I've got to start reducing the amount of stuff that's in it. So this room is is pretty much done. Um, there are some changes to happen with the pictures. There's a picture missing there. Uh, a couple of pots and things to go in. And this, this photo album is going to be interactable. And you can see photos and stuff in it. And I haven't haven't done that yet but that's the, the, the room and I showed this before but the sewing box now has is full of stuff it has all the stuff in it that, that I want in it so that's done mm, so yeah I don't know um, things have been slow recently and it's not all under my control and um, I'm a little bit disappointed with how progress has slowed down. But um, but I'm still making good progress and I'm happy with how things are going. The footstep system was fairly easy to implement and I was happy with that. I think it's going to be hard to find all of the sounds for it. I um, don't know how much I'm going to record myself. Hopefully not very much. Um, and... There are some things which I don't know whether I'm going to put in the game or not. But for example, I got hold of a, um, finally got hold of a, a game controller. So I want it to be controllable with that. And I've been fiddling around, not in this project, within a separate project with getting a, getting controller support, working with my, my character controller. And it's, it's tricky, it's harder than I thought, and of course it's going to involve the UI being quite a lot more complicated. At the moment I have these, um, in the in the bottom left I have these um, contextual prompts, and there is going to be a help system as well to show you the keys. At the moment they're all just pictures of keys on a keyboard and a computer mouse, and uh, obviously that's a whole bunch more work to then figure out what the buttons are on all possible different controllers that exist. And um, the contextual prompt system is going to be a little more sophisticated than it is right now. Right now I just have it that it's kind of um, always on in this quite verbose way. Uh, every time you look at an object that can be interacted with, it tells you in detail what you can do with it. I'm going to set it up so that um, there are kind of options for that. It doesn't have to be as verbose or some things can be tutorialized where it'll tell you a few times and then it'll stop telling you. Um, am I also going to extend all of that so that it works with controllers and stuff? I mean, that's quite a cuttable thing, isn't it? It's it's not high on the list of priorities and it might be a thing that doesn't, doesn't get done. Um, but anyway.
anyway, yeah, uh, Christmas is fast coming up, so it's uh, things are necessarily slowing down, and I think there won't be an update for a while. Uh, no, I don't know that anything major is going to happen until the new year, probably. Uh, I say anything major going to happen. I'm not going to um, get much done, is what I mean. Um, so yeah, uh, this has already gone a bit over my planned length, so um, I'll leave it there. Um, thanks for watching. I'll uh, see you again next time. Toodaloo.